Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, college coaches and high school or college football fans. This is Coach Anthony Williams, founder and CEO of Connected Athletics. We are a new startup company based in Austin, Texas. We're focused on using a technology platform that connects with today's athletics. With all the changes with NIL and the NCAA and social media and podcasts, it's now given athletes, even down to the high school level, a chance to tell their story and not have to wait for the local newspaper or radio show to interview them, to get their story out there. So our platform is all about helping student athletes share their story with college coaches during the recruiting process, with future fan bases, or the community they live in. Um, before I get into our special guest tonight, I want to once again want to thank our sponsors. Uh, I've got three of them that are really good and really supportive of high school athletics. First one, I think we all know Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, the VP there, Brian Soltis, a good friend of mine. Uh, he's a, uh, as passionate about helping student athletes during the recruiting process and maximizing the eligibility as possible. So I want to thank him uh, for bringing Buffalo Wild Wings in as a sponsor. I want to thank my friend Zach and the, and the crew up in Nebraska at Go Edit Graphics. Uh, they do these dazzling graphics that help outbound communication for high school and college athletic programs, whether it's a player profile or schedule or any outbound communication from the athletic department, they can, they'll do a customized uh, a graphic for you that includes your mascot and your school colors and really add a little, uh, little sizzle to your outbound communication on social media. And then lastly, my good friend out in Houston, Stefan Johnson has a company called I am Epic. Uh, Epic stands for every play I compete. They do tremendously creative uh, uniforms, uh, seven on seven jerseys, uh, workout gear, a little bit of everything. So you definitely want to check them out. Uh, they've got some really uh, different designs that I think a lot of kids will vibe into with their whole, you know, focus on Epic, uh, which is uh, awesome. So I want to thank Stefan for that. With all that to the side, and I once again thank all my sponsors. Let's bring in um, our guest tonight. It's also a young man I've gotten to know pretty good. Uh, Landon Mumphrey, class of 23. He's a cornerback DB. He's got a strong GPA of 3.4. I always mess up how to say the name of the school. Sackies. John Landon, how do you say the name of the high school? Sackey High School. Sackey High School up in the Garland area. He's six foot, 170 pounds, member of the National Honor Society. He was, uh, he's also got some musical talent. He's a great singer. He's in choir. He was named the most outstanding uh, singer award. And then for college coaches that maybe have not visited uh, Landon on Twitter, you can see his uh, Twitter name there, Landon Mumphrey. Landon, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing really good. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I'm looking forward to hearing your story. I know you literally just got back from the uh, Saturday Night Lights camp up in Oregon, which we'll talk to you about. I really want to thank you for coming home and, and getting situated and coming on the podcast. But let's start with, as you know, and I know your dad preaches this and your mom, uh, the importance, uh, the most important thing about recruiting is the academics. Uh, you're, support, you're rocking that 3.4 GPA, but let's talk about the, 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 um, the focus that you put individually on your academics. I try to be really diligent and precise about my academics and what I turn in. I hope I try to make everything that I do really good and represent me in the best way and try to reflect what my teachers have taught me in my grades. Okay. What are some of your favorite classes uh, that you seem to strive in that you spend a little, a little time in? So my favorite classes are choir. I guess you could count that as a class. And I really like English class. I'm in a pre-AP. Well, right now I'm in AP DC Lang, which is preparing me for college. And by the time I exit high school, I should have all my English credits done. Len, I think you are the first player, and maybe other players didn't mention that I've ever uh, interviewed in this podcast, uh, that's actually part of choir. You know, me being brought up in church and playing bass in my church choir back in the day. Uh, talk about that. I mean, talk about that side. It's kind of a... It's a nice offset from football, the physicality and the hard work and sweating. And then you're in the choir and, and you're singing, use your voice to praise God and, and share. So talk to, to us about how that make, it kind of rounds you out as a student athlete. Yes, with choir, it's very, you. It's a, it's a lot like football and you have to be really precise and really work on it. So with singing, I really try to focus my efforts whenever I'm in it to focus on choir and be like, okay, this is choir class right now. I'm focusing on that. And I really have to work really hard to try to make sure my voice is good and blends with my other classmates or teammates, as you would say, mm -hmm. try to make sure that we all blend as one. And then after choir class, I usually go straight to football. So yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's funny, you bring up a good point. Both, both, both of us have an experience with, with music and, and, and specifically choirs. It is a lot like a team. You can't have the altos trying to sound like sopranos and, and the bass. I mean, talk about how 
choir is kind of the ultimate team sport, actually. Yes, choir is really the ultimate team sport because we all just have to really work hard together. And whenever we get on stage, we have to work as one instead of one person like singing out and then you have one person blasting and then you have the other three yeah. parts not sounding the same and it's not blending. And then we don't get a perfect score and then we don't get that big old plaque. Right, right, right. Okay, I like it. Um, so you're, you're in choir, you got uh, AP classes. Uh, you know, there's, there's not a student athlete that doesn't have a favorite teacher coach, tutor, somebody that's helped them through a difficult class. Who is that teacher? And it could be back in elementary. So who is somebody who's made an impact in your life academically that you want to shout out right now? Academically, I really, I cannot even say because at my school, all my teachers really make sure that I put my best foot forward. So Ms. Hobbs has had a really big influence on me. She's got me introduced into BSA. I would say her, and I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers here, but li yeah. really well, every single one of my teachers have helped me in tremendous ways I can't even explain. That's awesome. No, that's awesome. Uh, my wife is an educator 20 plus years. And I know that those that make it fun are the ones that student athletes remember. So shout out to all those teachers that have helped you kind of lock in and, and enjoy the, the why we're all here, the, the fact of learning, uh, which is awesome. Landon, tell these college coaches, you know, every college coach uh, worth their salt wants to understand when they recruit a kid and, and have a kid join the program, how they learn. What kind of learning style do you have? What would you tell them? Are you more of a verbal, visual, or hands-on learning style? I'm very much a visual learner. I like to see things and see how they work and see all the mechanics of it before I go out and try it. So, yes, I really try to be visual about it and understand and nitpick every single thing and how to do it before I go out there and attempt to do it okay i like it um you know we're, we're kind of well we're, we're trying to come out of this backside of COVID now and we're hoping that this fall uh the ncaa will allow college coaches to get back on high school campuses and look at the recruits that they're looking at uh, and get back to seeing them in the classroom when a college coach comes to your school and sees you in the classroom give them a, a preview where are you sitting how do you interact with your with your classmates and more importantly how do you interact with your teachers so in class, I really try to be attentive and engaging. So if a teacher has a question or something, I'll try to be the first one when I know the answer to speak up about it. And if I don't know the answer, I'll just ask her, be like, what do you mean by this question? Da, da, da. And then I'll like just try to talk about it and ask her about it and interact with my classmates and see what we can work out. I like it. That's, that's a great uh, preview of what coach is going to see. I know you're you know, going to your junior year here, but do you have an idea what you might want to major in when you do get to college? I'm thinking about majoring in entrepreneurship because both my parents both own, own sports leagues. Yep. And I think that would be a really good fit. Try to run my own business and everything. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Uh, you know, I know you have a strong GPA, but there's always a class that gives us little troubles. And that's definitely going to happen at the college level. Tell these coaches, when you do have a class that you kind of struggle in, what's your solution to make up for it? Are you going to go talk to the teacher? Are you going to seek a tutor? Are you going to seek any academic services? How do you handle when you do struggle in a tough class? So if I'm struggling in a tough class, I'll usually go to tutoring in the morning, but now my schedule is filled. So I used to go to tutoring during lunchtime or even during class. And if I have a question, I'll just walk up to her desk or his or her desk and just ask, so like, how do I do this problem? Like, what is this? And they'll explain on the board and then I'll understand and then I'll be better equipped to handle it. Excellent. I like that. That's a great uh, best practice to have. Hey, let's switch over and talk about you personally. You, men you mentioned your family, your mom and dad earlier. Uh, great family, big fans of, of your dad and your mom, obviously. But for those that, that don't know your family, tell us about your mom and dad. What do they do? Do they, do they have a sports background? And also tell us about your siblings. So my mom and dad both played college sports. My dad played football at SMU and my mom did volleyball at UNT. And my older sister is has her own business. It's called Body in Motion and she's a personal trainer. She's out in the Houston area. And then my little sister just started playing basketball, volleyball and all that stuff. And she just made the athletic scene. So I'm super proud of her and everything that she's doing. Okay. So uh, older, older sister, younger sister, uh, tell me about the importance you put on being a big brother to your younger sister. Yes, I really try to influence her in the best way that I can. She goes to my old middle school and I put some really deep roots down there. And so I'm trying to make it the best, do the best that I can to make sure that whenever she comes over to Saxe High School that everybody knows who she is and everybody has an up, the utmost respect like how they have for me. I like it. Uh, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, I know how hard you work in the off season, grinding with, you know, camps and combines and workouts and now we're coming to the season. But when you do have some free time, 
homework's done, no practice today, no game. When you have some free time, what are some of your hobbies and interests? I really like to hang out with my friends. I try to make that top priority with me because human interaction is really important to me. I feel like if you don't have that, you can't be successful. I like to sing a lot. I also take, I also create videos. I have a little YouTube channel called One And If y'all wanna follow me with my little cousins. And we made a couple of songs. We made two songs and we have a, a one YouTube video up. And I like to edit videos, do photography, take pictures, all wow. that fun stuff. Man, that's a lot of stuff. You know, you're, you're, you're almost forced me to ask you to sing a little bit. I mean, are you feeling comfortable? Would you want to share a couple bars with us right now? No, I've never heard you sing. So I'd love to hear it, but if you're not comfortable, I won't push it. I wish I could, but I'm a little hoarse from this weekend. So yeah, my voice okay, is not, then I'll, I'll, not I'll get you. A, I'll get you another time when, when the vocal cords are ready to go. Um, Landon, mm -hmm. you know, you've got a very good active uh, social media presence right now, and you know how important uh, that is in the recruiting process. For a college coach that has not seen your social media, your, tw your Twitter feed, give them a preview. What are they going to see? What's your messaging? And, uh, and how, are, how are you using social media to benefit uh, your, your growing, your journey? Y'all are going to be in for a treat with my social media. I have a whole bunch of videos of me working out, training, football, track. I have a lot of track stuff up because whenever I started my social media, I was in mid-track season and we made it all the way to regionals in our state. And so, yeah, I have a lot of videos of that up right now. My presence on social media, I try to implement like all the things that are going on socially in the world, like Black Lives Matter, different types of movements. And I really try to put my voice out there in the best way that I can. I like it. You mentioned track and there's not a football coach when I coach in college. You love players that, that play football and run track. I know you're a jumper, but tell these coaches uh, uh, what events you do in track and how does it make you a better football player? Yeah, so in track, I run the 400, I run a 49 the 400, I also run the 100 and 200, I do long jump, triple jump, high jump, all that stuff, wow. and for track is a big deal for me because it implements speed, and as a corner, I have to be able to be very quick and choppy with my feet, and even in the deep passes, I have to be able to go to the backfield and get back there and get that receiver if I need to. Okay. Any thoughts on, I know we're just watching track and field now with the Olympics. So you get a chance to watch some of the, uh, some of our athletes compete because the, some of these times are just amazing. Uh, what are your thoughts on what you've seen so far on the Olympic tri uh, uh, track and field meet so far? Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of the Olympics recently. I'm going to junior Olympics myself to Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. I just got back from Oregon. So yeah, I've been very busy with the camp with Oregon and everything. And we yeah. have not had any time to settle down at all. Bringing out old memories. All my kids competed. We're, 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 we're blessed enough to compete and go to J.O. So good luck this week. That's uh, fond memories of my kids running like you. Four by one, four by two, four by four, individual events, high jump, long jump. So where, where is J.O. at this year? It's in Houston. Yeah. Okay. Good luck with that. So not, not, not too far for you to travel. Um, kind of a fun question here. Um, what's your all-time favorite sports movie? And it doesn't have to be football. My favorite sports movie movie is 42. It's about Jackie Robinson yeah. and it really implements a lot of teamwork and building together as a team during, through facing different types of adversity, especially racism. Yeah, no, that's a very strong movie. I love that one. Uh, when it's your time to choose, uh, if you guys are going out to have dinner, what's your favorite food? What are you picking? I would, I would do sushi, most definitely. Really? Okay, that's yeah. one of the first I've heard of that. Okay, sushi. Uh, and then I don't know if you're into uh, uh, Marvel or uh, DC Comics, but if you could be a superhero, which one would you be and why? I would most definitely be Jean Grey because she has so much potential. And once she realizes her potential, she's so much stronger. And she even knows how to work as a team with her teammates and even be able to be on her own solely and beat up the bad guys. Okay, I like it. All right. Uh, probably a number one important question that most college coaches are going to ask you is when it's time for you to make your decision of where you'll commit to, who else is going to be involved with helping you make that decision, that very important decision? Mainly my inner circle, family and friends that people have a big influence on me and understand me as a person and feel and see where I fit in best at which school. Okay. No, there's not a, uh, an, a high school athlete that doesn't love Friday nights playing in front of a packed house with their community supporting and screaming and yelling and supporting them. And it's great. We love it. But what are you doing to give back to your community up there in the Garland area? Are you, I know you're involved probably with your church, but what other are you nonprofits or what are you doing to give back to your community up there? 
Yeah, so recently I joined Beta Club and that's an organization at my school where you have to be invited, first of all. And we volunteer at like different churches, sports organizations. I do, I volunteer at the children's ministry at my church and I volunteer at different sports leagues and organizations and try to help out the kids. And even whenever the middle school has track meets up at Saxe, I'll be there and I'll be helping out, setting up hurdles, coaching up the kids, hyping everybody up, just being really good, bringing up the energy because I know those kids are so nervous. Yeah, no, I like it. That's, that's well run. And giving back is, is more important than, than, than receiving in my point of view, but I'm, I'm sure you feel the same way. Hey, one of my favorite questions is this, and this, you know, before as a former player and coach, we're all focused on the game and contributing, get my education, but think down the road a little bit. What do you want your, what do you want your life to look like once you're done with the game, whenever that is, whether it's after a successful NFL career or after college, what do you want your life to look like when you're done playing the game of football? Yeah, whenever I'm done with football on track, I'm thinking about being a performer or even being an art, uh, author, and hopefully my business will be sparked up by then. Okay, I like it. Um, let me ask you this, then I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to have one, but do you have a favorite quote? And if you do, what is it? I actually do not. There's so many good ones. Wow. Yeah. There's so many good ones. I just, I just can't even pick one. Okay. That's fair enough. Cause there's a lot of great ones out there. Brennan, Lana, tell me this, what's your why? Uh, right now it's been hot here in Texas. You're competing, get ready for JL. You're doing workouts. You're flying to Oregon. Uh, you've got so much things going on. There's gotta be some days you just feel like mom, dad, I'm, I'm, I just don't, I'm not feeling it today, but you still get up and you do the workout, whether it's a track workout or a football workout. What's your why? What motivates you to push past that? I don't want to, to want to achieve your goals down the road. Okay, so before I answer that question, my computer's about to die, so I really need to plug it up real quick. Okay, go ahead. Okay, sorry about that, yeah. Okay. Not playing right, did it, okay. Okay, I'm ready. So what's your why? What, what motivates you on those days when you don't want to work out, you don't want to go to track practice, you don't want to go to work out in the weight room? What's your why? My why is my commitment that I made to my team before we even started. Whenever I signed up for football and track, I'm committed that I'll always be there for them and work out with them and do whatever they need me to do. And I also love competition. I love competing. So that really motivates me to wake up in the morning and be like, oh, 5 a.m. I got to get to the school at 6. Got to get ready. Got to compete. And it's a fight every day for my position. And I know many people will love to have it. And I know many people are not as fortunate to be doing what I do and have the gifts that I have. We'll talk about that a little bit as we switch over to recruiting and, and your football uh, experience. Uh, you're a starting corner now. Tell us, what are, what are some of the things you're working on this past off season that you want to bring into your junior year? I've been working on my confidence mainly and being more aggressive because in COVID year, a lot, a lot slowed down in the game. I had to learn the game completely different because I transferred from safety to corner. So I had to learn a whole new position and a span of like two weeks before our first game. And so I really had to buckle down and focus and be committed to what I signed up for. And they wanted me to play corner. And I think it's a great fit for me. You know, coming from a, a former defensive coordinator and my son, Aaron, as you probably know, uh, played at Texas and played in the NFL. He went from corner to safety. And he said something I think that will relate to you. He told me that yeah, when, you move, when you go from corner to safety, corner, you're, you're playing most of the game with your back to the game. Whereas safety, you play most of the game and you have a full feel, feel of feel. What, what is your perspective on moving from safety to corner? Because it is two, it, it, people say, oh, it's a DB. It's two different worlds from an from a eye standpoint. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, safety, I really felt like when I was back there, I felt like I had more control over everybody. Yeah. I was like, okay, this person is doing that, this person is doing that. Right. And I could like help them out if I need do and just be wherever I wanted to honestly and just do yeah. whatever I want I guess but with corner it's more it's more grueling it's more intense like I have yeah. to be on part with everything that I'm doing I can't worry about everybody else because I'm on an island by myself and I have to worry about myself and get my job done before I try to help everybody else yeah uh, that's a great explanation and people don't really understand how difficult and how different those two positions are uh Landon, a couple more questions here Landon um what how would your teammates describe you as a teammate? How would they, how would they describe you to somebody else who would maybe say, hey, what kind of teammate is Lana? How would they describe you? 
I feel as though my teammates would describe me as somewhat soft-spoken, but whenever I need to speak up, I will. I feel like they would describe me as encouraging and I lead by example. Okay, that's good, very good. Tell me, um, what motivates you? Or, or What or who motivates you? On a Friday night, you're in the locker room, getting hyped. What are you thinking about that's gonna help you? Like, yeah, I'm gonna be the difference in this game. I'm gonna make big plays to help my team win. What, what motivates you to be the best player on the field each Friday night? Honestly, I would say my coaches and my teammates, like just looking at them just hypes me up immediately because I see all the work that I put in, but I never really try to think about all the work that they put in, all the hours and all the tears, blood, sweat, and tears that they put in to make me the best that I can be. So I really appreciate them for that and I do it for them. I like that. Which leads to my next question. You know, one thing we don't talk about a lot in football is trust. The importance of trust between player to player, player to coach, and a coach trusting a player. You can be super talented, run a four or five, and have great athletic ability. But if a coach doesn't trust you to execute your assignment late in the game before a big play, you won't see the field. How important is trust to you as a player amongst your teammates and amongst your coaches? Trust, trust is such a humongous part in what we have to do on the field and how we have to handle our business. If I can't trust my teammate to be there, if I can't trust the safety to be over top whenever I'm uh, playing the flats, if I can't trust him to do that, then there's really no point of even going out there because right. if I can't trust him to do that, then what else are you not going to do, you know? Mm, yeah, that's a great point. That's a really good point. Tell me, uh, Lena, are you a big study uh, film guy? You like watching film your opponent each week? Is that helping your preparation? How much time? Yes, I know yeah. your dad, because I know me and my kid. How much? How much extra film do you watch with you and your dad every day? Get ready for the season here coming up on a regular basis. Mainly, we haven't been watching film lately. We've had such an intense workout schedule that from in the morning, from like seven to eleven, I'm training at school, and then I have like a couple hours to get my life back together, and then right. I go outside and I go train with my DB coach. So yeah, we haven't been watching a lot of film here, but at school we try to implement hours to watch film, watch practices, and my coach will point out, okay, like your feet, you weren't in the right place, your eyes are not correct, and we try to work that out and nitpick everything. So during the season, we won't have to worry about it. Good job. Okay, I like that. That's a great response. Um, tell me, so we just talked about it. You just got back from uh, Saturday Night Lights at Oregon. Uh, tell us what that experience is like. Oregon is one of the top schools, obviously, on the West Coast. I'm from California, so a lot of respect for the Pac-12. Uh, tell us about your experience out there. What did you like about Oregon, and what, are some, what were some of your takeaways from that experience? Oregon was so amazing. The place, it's beautiful, and the food is so good, and the coaches were so welcoming. I pretty much met almost like every single coach there and the staff was just so welcoming and everything it just it was so nice the facility was so beautiful and I I really liked it there but a lot of the stuff that I've taken away is just having more confidence and being more attentive and being more aggressive that's what I've seen a lot of being like I saw a lot of people being aggressive and those people got offered so that's something that I need to implement to my game. Mm -hmm. You know, you're right in the sweet spot of recruiting right now, uh, going into your junior year. Uh, what's been your experience so far, and what are some of the things you looked on enhancing your recruiting as you go and get ready for this upcoming season? So far, I've seen I've seen a lot of people get recruited just off of like one big play, and that's all it really takes. So I've just been trying to figure out what I need to do and like be consistent. Like I, yeah, one big play is cool, but I want every single play to be a big play. Yeah, that's great. Great mentality. Uh, being a big playmaker starts with the mentality of I'm going to make a big play. So that's uh, that's very important. Hey, is there a certain player either at the college or the, or the pro level that you padded yourself off of? Uh, which DB, safety or corner do you kind of like, yeah, I want to play like that guy? Who, who is that guy that you kind of look up to in your position? Yeah, last time I said uh, Deion Sanders, but I've been looking at Jalen Ramsey just a little bit whenever I was on the plane. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just studying him and his footwork and all the stuff that he does. Yeah, also a player of high confidence level. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a very good somebody to look at, to look up to, uh, and bringing some of your game. Uh, coming up here, lastly here, Landon, adversity is a big part of the game, as you know. Uh, every game has ups and downs, like a roller coaster. Those that can manage it, the ones that are usually successful. How do you deal with adversity, both in football and in life? Yes, Darren, adversity is a really big part of life and football. I have to have a short memory as a corner. If I get a bomb thrown on me and he catches it, like I can't be like, oh man, I can't smoke in it. I have to be able to get back up and be able to go and guard him again and make sure that he doesn't get that two point conversion. And as far as life, adversity is everywhere, especially being a black man, you have adversity everywhere you go. So you yeah. just have to focus on the goal and make sure the main thing is the main thing as my mom says.
Excellent. I love that. Hey, uh, what about leadership? You know, every coach wants a player who's a leader, but obviously there's not, there's, there's leaders. And my father's tell me there's chiefs and then there's Indians. Uh, tell us how you define leadership and how you plan on leading as a junior this coming season. A leader is somebody that leads by example and uplifts the players. Like a leader is not somebody who is just loud mouth talking, yip yapping and everything. And they don't bring their, each other, their other teammates down. Like whenever they have a bad play, like, oh, you suck, you shouldn't even be here. That is not a leader in my eyes. A leader is somebody who helps the person. If they're struggling, they take some time after practice and try to coach them up with the coach even and just try to implement the best things that they can do and see how they can help the person that they need to help. Yeah. You know, Lenny, you've I was talked about earlier, your height and weight, you've already got good size. I know your mom and dad have good size. Uh, every college coach, like kind of look, you know, size the kid up, look at his hands, look at his feet. Tell these college coaches, by the time you graduate this time next year, what do you think your height and weight will be? By the time I graduate, I feel like I might be like 6'3", 6'4" maybe 190 200 ish it depends because i know track is a big part and my weight always goes down like i go from 180 in football season to 170 in track season so mm -hmm. yeah man you could be six four six three six four and run like you do in the secondary you can put a lot of fear into a lot of receivers and tight ends let me just tell you that right now that is that's tremendous size Hey, uh, finishing up here, you mentioned so we talked about you going to Oregon. Uh, you're from, to, obviously, you're in Garland. Do you have a preference? Tell these, give these college coaches a little bit of insight to your recruiting mindset. Are you okay with leaving the state, or do you prefer to stay in the state, in the, in the Dallas area with your family, or does it not matter? You want to go get the best education and the best college experience you can. What, what are your thoughts on that? Honestly, whoever's going to pay for my college, that's where <laughs> I really want to go. But I would really like to – I really don't even know. I just whoever offers me, honestly, wherever I fit in, wherever I like, whoever is has the best mentality for me and has okay. the best interest for me, that's where I want to go. That's fair. That's fair. You know, Lana, let me just tell you this. I know uh, I was going to ask you about NIL. I know it's still new and everything is it's still at the college level and it's brand new and it's going to change. But I will tell you this, young man, you, you've got the kind of brand uh, that I think a lot of when you do get to college, NIL, you will have some NIL opportunities. Uh, you've got a story. You, you share your beliefs, you're, you're humble, you're, you're grounded, come from a good family, and, and you care about the community and, and, and make an impact. And that is exactly what in, uh, you know, companies are looking for, when looking for somebody to, to endorse their products or their services. So, man, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, people always, I tell, I've been doing this for 30 plus years, your dad probably told you, and been around a lot of student athletes, and a lot of them are so focused on recruiting, they forget about just being the best student athlete they can be. When you're good enough, somebody will come and find you. So don't worry about the little things. Just keep working on being the best student you can be. Get those grades and those test scores up. Be the best player and teammate you can be. And, and things will take care of itself, man. And I think you've got to, you're on the right plan for that. I'm really excited about getting your story out to these college coaches and let them know who you are. Because as I mentioned before we started, those intangibles sometimes overweigh what you were in the 40 in, how many picks you had. Coaches want somebody that's going to fit in from a culture standpoint and fit in from a locker room standpoint. And I can see you fitting in a lot of great locker rooms and bringing it strong, both in the classroom and part of the football program. I'm very proud of you. We'll probably follow up an interview with you uh, maybe towards the end of the season. I know you're going to have a great season. Uh, good luck, um, you know, coming back from JL, obviously. And if you ever need anything, your dad's got my cell phone, man. You reach out to me. I'll do whatever I can to help you out, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you for your time tonight. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be up at game here pretty soon, okay? Okay, perfect. All right. Have a good night. Thanks, Lennon. You too.